and uh, uh, more interest in laparoscopy surgery. Today's topic is understanding inguinal hernia in kids. Now it is very interesting topic because it is very common in children and a lot of children undergo this kind of surgery. Now what is hernia? Hernia is basically occurs due to weakness in abdominal wall through which there is protrusion of the abdominal viscera. It presents as a bulge under the skin. So how it develops? Basically see, uh, it is so common and everyone wants to know why my child has developed the hernia. Now if you uh, have to understand that, you need to understand the embryology. The In male fetus, as the fetus grows and matures during pregnancy, the testicles develops in abdomen and then move it down into the scrotum through an area which is called as inguinal canal. Shortly after the baby is born, this inguinal canal will close down and it will prevent the testicle from moving back into the abdomen. However, if this canal does not close off, then it forms a communication between the abdomen and scrotum which allows the abdominal contents to protrude through the canal into the scrotum. Although the girls do not have testicles, they have an inguinal canal and so they can also develop hernia. So that is the reason that this communication is not uh, closed off, so they develop the hernia. Now, is hernia and hydrocele in children are same or different? However, the pathology is the same, means there is a communication. Now, if the communication is small, then from the abdomen, only fluid gets down into the scrotum and then it is known as hydrocele. If the communication is large with the abdomen, then intestine and omentum from the abdomen can come into the scrotum and then it is known as hernia. And in girls, even tubes and ovaries can protrude in the inguinal canal and then we call it as a hernia. So if it is fluid, it is hydrocele and if it is uh, any other content, then we call it as hernia. Now if you look at this uh, slide, then there is a bulge or swelling in the scrotum and this can be hernia or hydrocele. So we will go on to the next slide now. Now if you see this slide on the right side, there is the communication is small. So only the fluid can come into the scrotum. So we call that is an hydrocele. Now here on the left side, you see that the swelling, you know, the communication probably is large and then the bowel can come into the inguinal scrotal area. So then it is known as hernia. Now what is the incidence of inguinal hernia in hydrocele? In full term babies, the, it, the incidence is approximately 1 to 5 percent. In premature babies, it is 70 to 30 percent. So it is quite high. That is what I will like to you know, emphasize. Now, if the boys, in the boys, it is more common than in the girls, almost four to eight times. Now, is there any patients who are, or people who are more prone to develop the hernia? Then, if, if you know, the child's parent or sibling were operated for hernia, there are high chances, almost 10% of the kids will be, will develop the hernia. If the child has undescended testes, almost 70% has associated hernial sac. If there is abnormality of urethra, cystic fibrosis, any other abdominal wall defect, the chances of hernias are quite high. How the diagnosis of hernia is done? It can present at any age from newborn to elderly person. It appears as a bulge or swelling in the groin or scrotum. The swelling becomes more noticeable when baby cries and may get smaller when baby relaxes. Occasionally, hernia is not seen at the time of the visit to the physician and in such a case, the history given by parents is very important to reach to the diagnosis. The diagnosis of hernia can be confirmed by ultrasound examination, but it is rarely necessary to perform such a test. Now, <clears throat> if the child has hernia, then what are the problems? Usually, hernia is reducible. It can become irreducible. That is, that bowel which has come into the scrotum, you cannot push it back into the abdominal cavity. And this can get further complicated 
by development of the obstruction to the bowel lumen and this can further lead to loss of blood supply to the bowel loop which is stuck into the canal or in the hernial sac and if not treated then this can become gangrenous and hence it is very important to understand that the planned hernia surgery has very less risk compared to emergency surgery and, and hence hernia should be preferably operated electively at the time of diagnosis. Symptoms of incarcerated or obstructed hernia or strangulated hernias are the child does not look well, is ill, there is a lot of pain in the groin, there may be associated nausea, vomiting, swollen or distended abdomen, the child may have fever, may have swelling, uh, the swelling may be red, dusky in color or markedly tender, it does not change in size with the crying. So these are all signs of complicated hernia and the child needs to be seen immediately by the doctor. Now what are the incidence, if the child has hernia on one side, what are the chances that the child will develop hernia on the other side? Now if the child is less than two years, the chances or the patent contralateral processes vaginalis is almost found in 38% 38 per, 38 of the patient. If it is two to eight year old child, it is about 20% and if it is eight years, then 8%. The lifetime risk of development of hernia is about 15% when the person is operated on one side. And in girls, the chances of development of hernia or presence of contralateral processes vaginalis is almost 60%. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of surgery on affected side? Means when you are operating on one side, which is symptomatic, whether you want a operation on the other side to avoid the second surgery. So the advantage includes that in the same hospital admission and anesthesia the surgery can be done. However, the disadvantage is the lifetime incidence of contralateral hernia is only 15%. So you may be doing unnecessary surgery on the other side particularly when you are doing it open surgery. There is a small risk of damage to the testicle and vas deferens Vas deferens is the tube which transfers sperms to, from testicle into the urinary tract. So you can damage that. So one has to think whether you want to do that surgery routinely, particularly when you are doing open surgery. Now preoperatively, what we need is one just basic CBC, that is complete blood count. Other investigations are optional, which includes urine, X-ray chest, PT, PTT. Uh, lot of people do it. We do not do it routinely. Preoperative orders, what we do is in a small infant, we keep the child fasting for breast milk for only 4 hours, clear fluids for 4 hours. If the child is taking top feeds, the liquids 6 hours and solids 8 hours. So this is the fasting time or nil by mouth time. We take the consent of the surgery, we explain everything to the parents and then plan the surgery. The anesthesia wise, it can be done under, gen means all the surgeries are done under general anesthesia. If you are doing open surgery, one can just do with ketamine and midazolam. If, if required or a lot of times we put a caudal block, it's a small uh, uh, needle is put from the back or from the spine and the injections are given so that the child has post-operative analgesia. If the child is small or if we are doing laparoscopic repair, then we have to have endotracheal intubation and control general anesthesia. Now what is the treatment of inguinal hernia? Surgery is necessary in all cases. If it is hydrocele, one can delay the surgery by age of one year. If it is hernia, it should be operated as early as possible to avoid the complication. The recurrence rate is less than 1%. Elective surgery uh, has very small scar, there are no long term complications. The, uh, the complications of hernia includes, uh, I mean if the hernia gets complicated, the, it is a life threatening, it can cause bowel obstruction, perforation and if not treated, even death. Sometimes even the testes and ovaries can get affected in hernia and they can lose blood supply and the testes or ovaries can be waste. Now what is the open surgery? 
it takes about three, four to one and a half hour, depending upon whether you are operating on one side or two side, whether the child is very small, premature, newborn, infant or older child. In incarcerated hernia and sliding hernia, the surgery will take li little longer. Uh, there is a small cut of 2.5 to 3 centimeter is made in the groin at the natural skin crease. The contents are emptied back into the abdomen. Sac is tied off and wound is closed with dissolvable sutures. A lot of patients ask or parents ask whether the mesh is required. So no, mesh is not required in the children. It is used in adults. All wounds heals with the scar. So even this hernia will, whatever incision we make, there will be a scar, but it is inconspicuous. Now just to show you what kind of the scar. So this is the incision where we take and here would be the opening which will be closed off during the surgery. This is open surgery. If I am doing laparoscopy, there is a small cut which is made at the umbilicus to put the camera and two side cuts which are about 3 millimeter to put the instruments in. So what are the advantages of laparoscopy surgery in hernia? One can diagnose and treat the opposite patent processes vaginalis which is likely to form the hernia. So if there is no patent processes, there is no open patent processes, you don't need to do anything. So we don't do the surgery unless it is required compared to open surgery. The magnification of laparoscopy is likely to decrease the incidence of injury to the vas and vessels. In open surgery, the incidence is approximately 1% in the large series. The excess trauma is less because your opening or cuts are very small. Highest possible ligation of the sac is done, so the chances of recurrence are low. Minimal injury to lymphatics, so scrotal edema is less. And in girls, we can evaluate the internal organs because there is 1% chance of testicular feminization syndrome when the child is presenting as a girl with the hernia. What are the disadvantages of laparoscopy surgery? There is a controlled general anesthesia which is required. Surgery is done through the abdomen. There is a need of specialized equipment and experienced personnel to do this kind of surgery and reported higher incidence of recurrence. However, here I would like to emphasize we have described a technique which is known as IDES repair of inguinal hernia. We have done more than 200 cases and so far there is no recurrence in this kind of surgery when it is operated with this technique. Now, we this, the already have discussed this, how you do it. So general anesthesia, we put three trocars. One is 5mm and three, two are 3mm. Through 5mm, we put a telescopic camera. Through 3mm, we put the instruments to carry out the surgery. At the end of surgery, these tubes and instruments are removed and incisions are approximated. Are there any risk with this surgery? The complications are very rare in good hands when, when the patient is operated for hernia or hydrocele. The general complication includes the risk of anesthesia, wound infection and the bleeding. The complications specific to hernia repair includes injury to vas and testicular vessels. If hernia is incarcerated, then the testicle may already have been damaged due to lack of blood supply and damage to the nerve supplying skin sensation over the wound also can occur, which will give rise to numbness. The duration of stay in hospital, it usually can be done as a daycare procedure. However, overnight stay may be required if the hernia repair has been done as an emergency operation or if the child is premature, so only, until the gestational age of 60 weeks is completed, the, uh, the patient should be observed. Uh, overnight, full-term born child less than 6 weeks should be observed in the hospital. And if the child has some other associated illness like heart disease or repetition, then one should observe overnight. What kind of follow-up is required? Usually after the dressing, I mean after the patient is discharged, we call them back after 5 to 7 days on OPD basis to remove the dressing. Early follow-up should be done if the child develops high fever or if the wound becomes raw, red, swollen, it starts leaking some fluid or if you have any other concern. The dressing can be removed by local family physician if the patient is coming from far off and then the patient may follow up only if required. 
Usually we advise sponge bath until the dressing is removed. Normal activities can be started as and when child feels sufficiently comfortable. It is better to avoid contact sports and strenuous exercise for a few weeks after this kind of surgery. Remember, there is nothing you did or you did not do that has caused hernia to your child. A hernia is a bulge under the skin through a weakness or opening in the muscle wall of the abdomen. Once the diagnosis of hernia is made, surgical repair should be performed. However, if the child has hydrocyl, one can wait till the age of one year. In any surgical procedure, there are risk of anesthetic side effects, wound infection and bleeding. The risk of this happening is less than 1 in 100. Hernia repair is usually a day procedure with your child able to go home after that. In some circumstances, your child may need to stay overnight in hospital for observation. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, we can take care. Uh, Mr. Gemi has asked, is hernia always visible like bulge? Uh, I think we have already discussed this, but yes, is always visible like bulge. Very rarely the hernia will not be visible and uh, I think that is not common. We will not go into that. How long does it take for the operation? If I am doing open surgery, it would take me about 20 minutes for the hernia operation and anesthesia another 15-20 minutes. So roughly 45 minutes for one side and 60 minutes for two sides. If we are doing laparoscopy surgery, again approximate time would be the same. Uh, now, uh, is hernia always visible like bulge? Means sometimes the hernia is reducible. So when the swelling is reduced, you may not be able to see the bulge. But when the child cries or strains, then the hernia may become visible and then it may disappear. The Eddie has asked, in my childhood, I used to get bulge in my testicle. I was not operated. Doctor gave me medicine. Is there any chance to get hernia at later age? Now, we do not know what was the cause of bulge in your testicle. Occasionally, it has happened that, you know, that fluid may be coming into the uh, testicle and at uh, some point uh, this this uh, opening has become so small that even nothing is coming down so we do not advocate uh, surgery in an asymptomatic person however there is always a chance that you may get the hernia and if that develops then you may need an operation but till that time i don't think we need to worry about that or do anything is concerned the one of the question is how long it takes to get recovered now, for children, the recovery takes very less time. In the sense, if I operate today, next day the child is running around uh, and uh, he is normal. They, they have little pain, but not much. So the recovery in children is very quick. In an older patient, it takes a little longer. The ADS question, I also sometimes get bulge in testicle when I carry heavy weight is this hernia? I think you need to see a doctor and let doctor evaluate. If there is definite bulge, then it may be hernia and uh, then one may need to do something. So I think better show it to one of the general surgeon and uh, get the diagnosis done. Is there any chance of getting hernia again after you have operated? Now, as I mentioned you that, yes, there is always a chance of recurrence, but it is less than 1%, particularly in children. And uh, in our experience, even it is much less than that. Maybe uh, I must have done about 4,000 hernias in last 20, 25 years, 22 years. And of that, maybe, you know, 10, 10 have recurred or even less than 10. Uh, so, yes, there is always a chance of hernia to recur but it is very, very low. Prevention of hernia. There is nothing which you can do to prevent the hernia, but after the surgery, uh, you have to, uh, uh, you know, you avoid strenuous exercise and contact sports for few weeks in a children and uh, few months in an adult person. And if you are operating in an adult, again, they will do the mesh repair, which, which has very low incidence of hernia, I mean recurrence. So I want all of you to remember hernia is uh, uh, 
condition where the bulge may come in the inguinal or groin region and if that comes you need to consult your doctor or surgeon pediatric surgeon and if it is diagnosed as hernia it is better to do elective surgery rather than waiting waiting does not help in any way it will just make the sac very very thick and chronic the chances of even even in such a case the elective surgery uh, the chance of injury to vas and vessel increases so it is better to operate early to avoid the complications as well as other problems can it be cured permanently as yes, hernia once you operate it is a permanent cure the recurrence is very very low so uh, once again i thank you all for uh, visiting uh, or attending this webinar on uh, understanding of inguinal hernia in kids thank you thank you very much